evening lovely people um i hope everybody is doing well on this marvelous tuesday the first of december um i'm doing all right this week actually i have spent the week well i say the week i spent all day today cleaning the flat I've also got some very exciting news. Um, I have a new puppy, actually. Um, his name is Buddy, and I got him about four weeks ago. Um, but yeah, he is the most sweet little boy I think I've ever met. And I'm probably being biased, but he, he is gorgeous. He's got such a lovely temperament and he's made me a very happy mummy. So I've not actually been very well either for the last few weeks now. I sort of, I had a self-harm wound which got quite badly infected um, and I was on antibiotics for five, six weeks. Um, and then I ended up having to have intravenous antibiotics. So I had a cannula in at home and was having to go to the hospital every day. Um, so it was a bit of a pain in the ass, but I kind of just, my thought process was I just want to get this over and done with. I just want to get it over and done with and be able to forget about it. Um, but unfortunately that didn't really happen because it kind of just got worse and worse. And I started getting temperatures and stuff. Um, but that eventually cleared up. And then I think it was last week at some point, I I actually got blue lighted into Gloucester Royal um, and I spent the night in recess because I don't think I realised how poorly I was and it came out, it came on out of nowhere and I was sort of struggling to breathe a bit and my heart felt like it was racing and I was like, am I having a panic attack or could this be something else? So I left it a bit and then... I started getting really shivery and stuff, but I felt really like clammy. So I felt like sweaty, but I was cold. Um, and I was like, mm, something's not right here. But then I sort of, I started getting a bit of pain in my chest and I was like, right, I'll speak to 111. So I spoke to them and they sent out an ambulance. The paramedics turned around to me. I knew both of them quite well. And they said, Abby, you're actually quite poorly. Um, and they queried whether I had sepsis. So I got taken to the hospital, spent the night in recess. I then discharged myself because I thought I was okay and I felt better. And I got into recess and I just got instantly surrounded by nurses and stuff trying to get blood from me. And they, they struggled for quite a while, but they eventually got my blood test back. Um, and I saw the doctor and he said, oh, are you aware of how anemic you are? And I was like, no, like, what do you mean? Um, and it turns out my iron levels and my haemoglobin levels, so the amount of blood in my body, is quite low. Um, and they said that's probably what's causing it, that's what caused the high heart rate and stuff like that. Um, so I was on a heart monitor overnight and stuff. I then discharged myself thinking I was fine. Um, and then about 12 hours later, I felt the same. So I got taken back in um, and the staff turned around when I turned up and they said, you shouldn't have discharged yourself, you've got sepsis. And I, I sat there and I was like, sorry, what? And they were like, oh yeah, you were, we were treating you for sepsis yesterday. And I was like, that's the first I've heard about it because they didn't tell me I had sepsis yesterday. They said my infection markers were actually okay. Um... So apparently I was being treated for sepsis, so I got sent up to a ward where I had some fluids. Um, and I'm now going to the hospital every week for iron infusions. Um, and I'm back in tomorrow to see what the plan is moving forwards. Because they keep, they, they're struggling to get cannulas in. Um, so they suggested a pick line, which I'm very against. I don't want it. Um... So it's just a waiting game to see what happens tomorrow and whether I need a blood transfusion, whether I carry on with the iron infusions. Um, I'm not really sure what's happening yet. So it's all quite stressful. Um, 
but I, I think that's had a big impact on my mental health over the last few weeks actually um so as well as not being very well the last few weeks i had a bit of a rough month last month and the month before um i kind of thought i was getting better and then i kind of got back into a cycle of self-harming um and kind of just feeling like i didn't belong anywhere and feeling like i didn't want to be alive and it, it was horrible because i think it's the worst i'd ever felt like it was sort of i felt suicidal but i just felt like i i didn't fit in anywhere and that i was a burden on everyone and it, it was really horrible because i was battling all these things in my head but i wasn't telling anyone about them until it got to the point where i was in crisis and then i i just i exploded and i self-harmed and i ended up having a lot of contact with the police which I'm desperately trying to avoid um but yeah I had a lot of contact with them and they were just getting pissed off with me and I understand why they were getting angry if I'm honest um but I got put under a section 136 probably four times in the space of two weeks um so it, it was pretty rough but I didn't I, I just got to the point where I didn't know what to do with myself, like I just, I felt like I was out of control, it felt like I wasn't in my own body and I've never experienced psychosis before whereas I was, like, I was experiencing psychosis at the time and it was horrible because it's like I could hear my grandparents telling me to hurt myself and I, I lost all four of my grandparents, well, my grandparents and then my step-grandparents a few years ago um, but it was like it was their voices I was hearing and it was horrible because it was, it was, it was just so tormenting, it, it was, it was horrible, um, but yeah, I kind of got back into a cycle of hurting myself again, um, and I was, there was a night I was actually sat in A&E with two police officers, um, and I knew that one of them didn't like me anyway. It was just the way she acted. She was very stuck up, um, very full of herself. And she sat there and she said, oh, Abs, come on, let's be honest. We all know you do this for a bit of attention and a bit of fun. And I sat there and I was already feeling like shit. And I was like, who are you to make someone feel like shit who already doesn't want to be alive? I said, how, like, how is it fair for you to sit there and make someone feel so worthless that they they doubt themselves and they criticise themselves even more and they feel like they deserve to hurt themselves even more? Like, how how is that fair? Um, and then she also turned around and she said, the whole police force get really pissed off whenever we hear your name regarding mental health. And I was like, but it just upset me because I think part of me was angry because I was like, who the hell are you to be saying this? And you shouldn't be saying this to someone who's struggling so much. But then the other part of me sat there and was thinking, actually, she has a point. Like, I know that they hate, I know that a lot of officers don't like me. And I know a lot of them think I'm attention seeking and that, I'm doing it for a bit of fun, but I'm really not. Like, I would do anything to be happy. And I'm not choosing to be depressed. I'm not choosing to have my, ment my mental illness. Like, I wish more than anything that I didn't have it. Because I want to be happy. I want to be doing things that other people my age are doing. And... I don't want to wake up every single day wishing I was dead. And that's what I couldn't seem to get across to her because they just thought I was doing it for a bit of fun, but I wasn't. Like, it, it's hard to explain. And I'm, I'm not going to go out, go on about it all night because it'll get boring. Um, but yeah, I, I did have a lot of contact with the police. Um, there was one officer who was lovely and he always is and he's one of the own well 
he's one of the very few officers who will actually make the effort to listen to me and to validate what I'm saying and he'll make the effort to, sorry, he'll make the effort to understand what I'm going through and think actually she's got this going on, she's got that going on, that's why she's feeling like this and he remains calm with me and he knows my trigger points, he knows what makes me more anxious and there's a few of them who are like it and they are absolutely amazing. Um, this one officer is called John Hemmings, pretty sure he wanted a shout out in my video because he watches my channel. Um, but yeah, he's lovely and there's the city protection officers who I see in town on a daily basis. Um, one of them is called Mike, I know he watches my channel and wants a shout out. Um, but they've been encouraging me to get back into doing these videos because it was helping me a lot. Um, so yeah they've kind of encouraged me to get back into it um but yeah i'm right i'm not gonna bore you anymore with my life story um but it's been nice to get back into this like i, I kind of i kind of missed doing my videos because it was a way for me to express my emotions and to get everything out and to also raise awareness because it's not just that I want to sit there and everyone to feel sorry for me because I don't. I want to raise awareness because I don't want other people to go through what I've been through. I don't want them to have the same experiences with police and the hospital and mental health people regarding what they're going through because it's fucking horrible. Like the things that I've been through with my mental health team and the things I've experienced with the police and stuff. There are times where they have made me feel worthless and they've made me question whether I want to be alive or not. And it, it's horrible, like, a human being should not make someone feel so worthless that they don't want to be alive. But that's kind of what some people do and you've just got to learn to roll with the punches, really, and try and ignore what people are saying. I know it's easier said than done, but... Yeah, a lot, a lot of what I'm doing is because I want to raise awareness. Um, but I do think doing these videos helps. Um, but I'm going to go because I'm going to go sort Buddy out. Um, but I hope you have enjoyed this week's video. I might do another one next week. It all depends on where I am mentally and stuff like that. Um, but I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their week. Um, and thank you for watching. <laughs>